Uh, I'm going to take that kind of to heart and just... We're going we're gonna to take that to heart and... and... about how, like, I need to be more consistent with my damage and not rely so much on the, the Dancing Dagger. Usually when I use the Dancing Dagger in this game, of course, it's with in conjunction with, uh, you know, other classes. But, uh... And honestly, I don't think that would have been such a big issue if, like, say, Ferris could have used her, uh... level 3 spells... or any spells whatsoever in that battle. I've always wondered why X-Death has control over the crystals. Like, how is he able to, like, to do that? Maybe, I guess, the crystals are just kind of... Well, I mean, the crystals themselves are... They obviously don't want to be shattered because they uh, have been... They give you their power every time they're shattered. But, like, in the Earth Shrine, I guess that's the best way to describe it. When we were getting the Earth Crystal and X-Death made the, uh, the shards attack us... Like, how is he able to do that? They just never explain, but so, you know, whatever. I guess you gotta leave some mystery in the games. Poor Krill. Save her, Galoof! Galoof has his most badass moment here. You know, uh, I remember people saying that uh, Final Fantasy VII is most memorable because they don't kill, because they kill off Ares, or Aerith, but I think Ares is the correct way to say her name, honestly. But, uh, but in all honesty, they've been killing off party members in Final Fantasy games since, like, the original NES Final Fantasy 2. I mean, there's four main... Well, I don't know. There's four party members that die in Final Fantasy 2. And then you got Final Fantasy 4. Tella dies. And let me see. Where is it? Anyway, Tella dies, and then, uh... This is a scripted battle. I probably should have taken the, uh... The Morning Star off to put on Galoof here, but... I don't... Eh, whatever. We'll just leave Galoof berserked there and just let him go ham on X-Death. But, you know, Tella dies in Final Fantasy IV. The twins are petrified and at the time right there I mean they get better by the end of the game but at the time that's like pretty much a death sentence and then uh, let's see Final Fantasy 6 General Leo dies Final Fantasy 7 Ares dies so yeah like a lot of the early Final Fantasy games they just kill random party members or people that look like they might join your party in the case of General Leo. And old Galoof meets his end here. In a very similar way as, uh, in a very similar way to uh, Tella, honestly. Yeah, 
In fact, I think X Death looks a lot like like a pale colored Golbez. Maybe I should do a side by side comparison, like when I get done here, of the Golbez sprite and the X Death sprite, because they just always look so similar to me. Also, I need to do some tests when I get the Twin Lance. Um... So I think I'll do that. Um, the, the test I'm talking about going through my head, I'm sorry. Uh, just stuff in my head and thinking, what am I going to be able to... What am I going to need to to finish the next part of the game? And I'm thinking that... I don't remember, like, okay, you know, the the Moon Ring Blade, it does the same attack power as the back, from the back row. I don't remember if the Twin Lance is the same way, so I'll have to test that. I know it's counted as a throwing weapon uh, the same way the Moon Ring Blade is, but, like I said, I don't know if it is the same power from the back row. It, it's not that big a deal if it isn't, I'll just throw Trebs in the front row. I think... So probably what I'm going to do, my, my next setup is going to be, probably going to put the Dancing Dagger back on Lena, and then have uh, Trebs use the, the Twin Lance. It's not going to be such a big deal, because in the next, uh, for, for Lena to do damage, not Lena, for... Ferris to do damage because the next major boss we're going to fight is going to we're going to be able to nuke them with elemental magic so that'll be nice we're going to have some fun there Yeah, there's really not much to say here. We just gotta wait for Galoof to beat X Death to death. Uh, um, I don't know if I've said this before, but I, I've got to say that X Death is the worst name for a villain ever, and they should be ashamed for naming him X Death. Uh, they seriously could have come up with so many more interesting names. Like that doesn't even like a lot of stuff gets a pass in the Super Nintendo era RPG wise that it didn't get a pass that wouldn't get a pass nowadays but the name X death is not one of those things I wouldn't even give that a pass like in the original Final Fantasy that's just a terrible villain name X death is not really so much a I don't know, X-Death is just not a very good villain. Although he does uh, do a lot of things that a lot of good villains do. He's very, very... Uh, after he's unsealed, he is very present in the plot. You see him a lot. Uh, of course, by the time he's unsealed, there's really not a whole lot of game left. He's really present in World 2. Uh, in World 3, when there's not that much game left, he's he's present up until the point where you get to the, the point where it's like, okay, you can either go to the end of the game or do all the side quests. And then... I guess he's sort of present in World 1 before he's unsealed uh, because he's technically in control of King Tycoon. And you're just kind of chasing after team King Tycoon and you see King Tycoon so I you know but honestly X death as a villain his premise is kind of dumb well I mean his premise is okay I think but like the execution of the premise 
is kind of dumb. I don't know. Like, I don't know, it's weird. Like, X-Death has all these points in his favor as a good villain, but I still don't think he's a good villain. And I, and I, uh, I don't know why. This, this fight is probably why, honestly, because, um, like, Galoof is a white mage, and I've got a flail on him, and I'm beating X-Death to death 60 points of damage at a time. So, this is my life now. And, uh, yeah. Um, see, I don't have a fast-forward button set, otherwise I would just fast-forward through this. So, note to self, uh, for future battles like this, I don't, are there any other battles like this that are scripted in such a way that you can't lose? I don't think so, I think this is it. Come on, Galoo, finish him off. No. <sighs> Hold on. One second. Okay. Here we go. Sorry about the music being terrible. Even though I can't hear it. Let me turn up my headset so I can't hear it. See how bad it sounds. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. <laughs> but we'll get to the fight in a reasonable amount of time, I think, now. Uh, and by reasonable amount, I mean only slightly more than probably double what... There we go. Eh, whatever. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. I might actually just fast forward... I'm thinking I'm gonna fast forward the, uh... That in post, maybe. Or probably not. I did talk a little bit about there. Because that, uh, about X death there, and that would require a lot of extra work. So. See, this right here is something they should have done in Final Fantasy VII. Right here. This. This right here. Like, you got Galoof, he's dying, they try to cast Kuriga, they cast Raze, they use a Phoenix down and an Elixir, none of it works, and like, you know, that right there, that stops any of the jokes, and the, the her her, they should have used a Phoenix down, you know, like, that people say when they talk about Ares. And there's Krill, and we gotta wait again. We're just gonna run around in circles. Sorry, my headset uh, appears to have uh, turned up. And like one of the reasons why I don't have sound is I can hear myself, and it and throws me off so much when I can hear myself. You guys just don't even know. Krill, come on, get up, get up, get up. Stop being a negative Nancy. Stop. St stop crying. Outside we go. Where Galoof has one last message for us. And uh, I will tell you this right now. I am so happy that Galoof got to be a white mage. Like, you guys do not even know. 
and I will show, if you've never played Final Fantasy V, I will show you exactly why I was so happy that Galoof was my white mage. Like, I got up and I danced a jig and everything. And, like, Krill is my favorite party member because she has the best costumes for her jobs. And, you guys, her white mage outfit is the best white mage outfit. <laughs> it is the absolute best. And I just cannot wait to show it to you. So Krill joins the party to replace Galoof. We hop onto the Wind Drake. And then I'm gonna land and I'm gonna show you Krill's why I'll show you exactly why I was happy that Galoof was my white mage. Man, that poor forest got burnt to heck, didn't it? Anyway. Land, land, land. Where's the place to land? Where's the place to land? Right here. You guys. You guys. Seriously. Krill has the best jobs. First of all, look at the cute little ninja. She's got the pink armor as the samurai. That's her berserker. First, oh, you guys. That is, that is the best berserker outfit. She's in a... She's in some, like... And raging pajamas or something. That's great. Uh, Mystic Knight. That. Right there. That's why I'm glad. Cat ear. I'm so happy, you guys. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. So happy. So happy. Put the plumed hat on. And the gold hairpin. And I think we're going to leave that on because you know what I'm gonna leave uh, that morning star on her for now so anyway let's fly on out and this by the way wasn't here before we, uh, I think that was something that like maybe X death blasted the mountain I don't know but it's there now so we're gonna fly out with windbreak and we've got to go to Excess Castle. Um, do I want to do the Gill Turtle Cave? I think I'm going to do the Gill Turtle Cave. But before I do that, I'm going to actually save my game and take a quick break, go get a soda. And then I'll be back. And I. We don't have too much left in World 1. We've got one more dungeon. And we're gonna, I'm going to try and do the Gill Cave correctly. Because I, I don't want to. I don't want to cheese it, you know. So, let's see. I'm going to save in this empty slot. So, I'll be right back. <laughs> 